All right, here we are. UV mapping two notes coming in hot. So um, today we're just going to be codifying uh, some stuff uh, as we start to get uh, more um, practiced with the UV editor. Um, just reminding you of some things that we've uh, talked about uh, on past notes that come back in a slightly different way when we're working in the 2D UV space. And then just uh, a new uh, a new step in our uh, mapping process. Um, I'll get you guys one. Um, so with uh, the first question here is actually talking about something a little bit techy. Um, the uh, the thing is is a vertex can be in more than one spot in the UV editor. And we're going to talk about why that is. But first, I'm going to print one of these. Hello, hello. All right. So um, the first question on here, a vertex may be represented on more than one shell in the UV editor. How or why does that work? So let's take my uh, example piece here. So this cinder block is... Uh, going to be coming to you uh, in the next uh, short period of time, not this week, but sometime soon. And uh, I completely destroyed the UV maps on this so that you guys would have no fun doing the assignment. Um, as you can see, the UV maps are causing my checkerboard texture to apply in a way that I would loosely describe as disgusting. Um, so, how would we fix this if we wanted to apply textures to this? Um, so let's talk about the uh, the vertex problem first, and then we'll talk more about the UV editor and how we fix this bad boy. So um, this vertex right here, I'm going to click on it. It's on the front of, here, let me turn my um, checkerboard texture off for you guys. So it's on the front of my cinder block. It's also connected to this face on the inside here and this face on the inside here as well. So, uh, this is not very useful because my UVs are garbo. Okay, here. So, we'll pull a audible. So, let's take this cylinder instead and talk about this cylinder. So, this cylinder, if I grab a vertex up here, or that's actually the only vertex I can't select <laughs> for this. Let's see that one. Okay. So, if I zoom in here, you will see that I have a vertex selected in the 3D space, but in the 2D UV space, it's actually selected two separate points on different shells. So this is the shell for the top of it. This is the shell for the sides. And you can see that this vertex is on two different shells because that's where the seam is between those shells. So this vertex in the 3D space is just one vertex, but because we've decided to divide the UV shells along the edge that that vertex is a part of, it ends up being represented on the shell for the top and for the side. And you'll see if I go into my UV selection mode in the 3D space and I click on that same vertex as a UV in the 3D space, it selects both, both of the UVs in the 2D space. So be careful. Be careful and make sure you know what you're clicking on. So let's go back to the, the vertex question. So how and why does this happen? A UV point in the UV editor on a shell is a representation of some vertex in, in the 3D space, but within the 2D space. So if that vertex happens to be represented on two or more shells, then you're going to need a UV point on each of those shells to represent where that vertex exists, okay? So the more shells you have um, that are divided up from that vertex or along that edge, the more uh, times that you will see a vertex represented along different shelves. So the short, simple uh, way to remember this, a vertex is one point in the 3D space, but may be represented as one plus point in the 2D space. It all depends on how your shells are constructed. Now, let's chit chat about some 
some other things, some some uh, past friends of ours come back to uh, rejoin our work in the UV editor. So we should hopefully vaguely remember the uh, different display modes within Maya. So the display modes four, five, and six do something slightly different in the UV editor. I'll go back and show you this in a second. I'm just standing up here talking so I can point at things and not have to sit at my desk. So we got four, five, and six. That's going to, for four, that's going to just show the wireframe of the shell. It's just going to show you where your edges and UV points are in the UV space. On five, it will shade your shells with the appropriate color, red or blue. You will, we'll talk about what the difference is between red and blue in just a minute. Okay. So five is shaded mode. Typically you'll be working in, in the five shaded mode. Um, I don't often find it useful to have the texture displayed in the UV space, but you know, sometimes you do do that. So six toggles the texture display beneath the shells in the UV space. Our uh, our best friends, our toolbar, our default tools, select, move, scale, rotate, all in the same spots, Q, W, E, R. The only difference is that they don't do things in three dimensions. You can't rotate your two-dimensional space in the third dimension. That's simple. Um, camera controls. One thing that is neat about working in the UV editor is that since you can't actually, uh, you can't actually like rotate around the UV editor, you can't rotate it either in two dimensions and you can't obviously rotate it in the third dimension. So the rotate, as you guys are used to in the 3D space, alt left click pans in the editor so that you can move around. So you don't have to be holding your uh, middle mouse button in the entire time you're working in Maya. So that is very nice. Last two things on here, we're familiar with the concept of a selection mode by now, I hope. Um, so selection mode for UVs and a selection mode for UV shells. So um, the difference being that when you're using it under the just, just UV select mode, you're clicking the individual points on a shell or within a shell versus the UV shell select mode, which is essentially the same as selecting all of the faces that are within a shell. So you'll see what that looks like in a second when I go back to my desk. So I'm going to go do that right now. Did you copy in everything already? Yeah. Okay, for sure. Okay, so let's uh, take a peek. So in the UV editor, if I hit four, wireframe, no shading. It's just the edges border edges, and the UV points. That's all you get. Five, we shade it either with uh, this purple blue or with like a pinkish red. I'll talk about what that signifies in a moment. So, and then six, if there was a texture to display on this, the texture would be showing here in the zero to one space. For me, we don't have that. So there's nothing to show. So like yesterday when you guys were working on the Rubik's Cube, you guys noticed the Rubik's Cube texture was displayed in here. That is a time when displaying the texture is useful. It's not always the case. Just making that point. Our move tools, I'm not going to show this stuff. You guys are used to it. Blah, blah, blah. UV shell and UV select tool, I'm going to demonstrate right now. As we talk about what is known as unfolding. So this is the next step along our path to creating good UV maps. So we have learned how to perform a planar operation to a planar mapping action, whatever you want to call it, to create or recreate a new custom fresh shell from our selected faces. So let's, uh, let's talk about what happens when things aren't perfectly square when things uh, don't necessarily come in with the right shape to their shell in the, two, in the UV space and things look weird. So back to our friend, the cinder block here. So this cinder block, the UV maps are entirely garbage. They are not usable. So we have to do everything for this thing to make it usable. So I'm gonna turn on my checkered grid so you guys can see 
how my texture is being applied. And so I'm going to start with the eight faces that make up the front of the cinder block. Okay? So I got these selected. And I'm going to go over here to my planar mapping button. And I'm going to actually, instead of, uh, instead of, oh no, I'm going to need to either way. Instead of uh, shift clicking my planar mapping button, I'm just going to click on it. And that should be set to planar mapping on the X, which it is. So now I have a planar map of those faces on the X. And you folks can see, if I move here, I'm gonna take this shell and move it over and get it out of the way. So this came in, but it's slightly squashed and it's red. So we'll talk about what that means. So you can see here on my actual object, the squares don't look square. They're supposed to look like squares and instead we got a bunch of rectangles. So that means the proportion of our shell does not match the shape of the object in the 3D space because the texture isn't applied, it's being squished. So how we fix that is by performing an unfold. So I'm gonna switch into UV shell mode and you'll see that when I select it, I'm clicking all of the faces that are a part of that shell and the UVs that are with, within that. I'm gonna pop open this unfold section of the UV toolkit. And then you don't want unfold. You don't want unfold tool. You want unfold along. Okay, so when you hit unfold along, it's going to use either unfold along U or unfold along V, whichever one that you're choosing. So either one, it doesn't necessarily matter which one you start with. In general, in the future, I will show you times when it does matter. But for right now, either one. Again, not these two. Not unfold, not unfold tool, unfold along. That's all you need. Now, I'm gonna unfold this along V and you'll see one, it fixes the shape and therefore makes the, the squares appear properly. And secondly, you'll notice the shell is now blue. So if I undo my unfold, it's kind of difficult to see as it is. So I'm gonna scale this up. The texture is also applying backwards. See, it's flipped. So the red shells tell me that the uh, texture will apply to this backwards. It's telling me that the UV shell is not oriented the right direction. So now I'm gonna select all of this by double clicking in UV mode, unfold along, and now the proportion is right and it is applying the correct direction, yes, it is upside down. That is that is accurate. That is very fixable though. Um, I think it's under transform. I can just rotate 90-90, boom, now it's applying the right side up. So easy thing to fix, but the red means the texture applies backwards. Okay, and so now I'm gonna go in here and take this face here and I'm going to create a planar map of that. Now, that is on the Z-axis. So I'm just going to right-click the planar button and, hey, what do you know? It projected it from the Z-axis. There might be something to this. So now I'm just going to switch into UV shell mode, click my shell, unfold along V, unfold along U. Now it's unfolded. So another thing, to look out for is that these shells are unfolded and their squares now appear as squares, but the proportion between these shells, the proportion of the size of their shell doesn't match. So since all of this is going to be textured with the same stone type of texture that a cinder block would have, I am going to want the shells to have the same proportion so that texture applies evenly across all the shells. So you can either take this shell and scale it down, or I would have to take this shell and scale it down. Whoops. So I could scale this one down to match the larger squares on this shell, 
or the smarter one is to scale up your shells because then you're getting more texture resolution until they match or as close to matching because then the texture will apply not only evenly across them, but the larger the shells, the more textures that tile infinitely will increase their texture resolution. Because you can have two copies, four copies, eight copies, 16 copies of this texture being used to increase how, how crisp and clean it looks, the larger you make the UV shells. So using this, this checkered grid, you can see the larger this gets, the more it's tiling and reusing the texture. All right. So move on down to this. So unfold allows us to correct our planar maps to match the true shape of the shell. Why use a grid material when preparing our UV maps? How does the grid allow us to check our work while we are unfolding? So the, the square pattern on that grid texture is a very easy way to check the quality of our UVs because we know that the squares should look like squares. That, it's really that simple. So if the squares look like squares, we know that the, the UV shells have been unfolded properly and that their shape is accurate. The next thing to check with the, the UV grid is the size of the squares on shells that share the same material slash texture, okay? Um, and I differentiate those two because there may be some times where they share legitimately the same material or some where they're two different materials that share a texture, but you have some tweaks on them. Um, but the point is, is that the squares should be the same size on shells that are sharing the same material or textures so that they look the same when you apply that texture. So there's two things we check with that grid. The, are they squares to know that the, the shell is unfolded properly? And then how big are the squares relative to other shells with the same material so that we know that it applies properly? Now, one thing that uh, I was just demoing for you guys is the planar mapping button. There are some handy tips and tricks for using it quick and easy. So as you can see here, we have left click, middle click, right click. That's what the abbreviations mean in case that wasn't clear to you. <laughs> so if you middle click on this planar map button in the toolkit, it will automatically project from the Y axis. You don't have to change the setting. Same thing with right clicking on the planar map button. You right click on that planar map button, it'll always project from the Z. So if left clicking on the button just straight up just uses my last setting. What do you think a good idea if I were using this method? What would be the best axis to leave my left click set to? Y and Z are already, thank you. So X, if you leave X as your, your setting in the planar map option, left clicking the button projects from the X, middle clicking the button projects from Y and right clicking projects from Z. And as we've been using the last few days, just shift clicking, the, the button brings up the options box. And if you're not comfortable just, you know, using the three mouse buttons to pick your axis, you can always use the options box. You can choose X, hit apply, it doesn't look right. You select Y, hit apply, that doesn't look right. Hit Z, apply, okay, that's the right direction, whatever. Secondly, with unfold, we are just using the unfold the long button. In the future, we may use the unfold tool. Um, I've heard that it's gotten better. Trusting Autodesk is difficult these days. Um, so we'll see. Um, but basically, you just need to know you choose one unfold constraint to start with, and then you choose the other. So basically, me what these unfold along constraints mean, by the way, is you're basically saying unfold along you. So it's saying, um, given, uh, given this height, what should the width be? Given this shell is this tall, how wide should it be to get the proportions right and vice versa? So um, basically, 
that will never, the order of operations, whether you do V first and then U or U and then V, typically does not affect anything. Certain cases it will, um, but it is a good idea to use the same order of operations throughout your unfolding process because it means that more of your shells will, by default, end up in proportion with one another. So it's really helpful if you're using a lot of tileable textures because that means you'll have to do less of this step where you have to go back and get the shells to match. So if you do the same order of operations, they should tend to come out with the same proportions at the end automatically. Um, that's not always the case though. So um, that's it. That's uh, unfolding in a nutshell. We will have, um, we'll have an assignment on this tomorrow on Friday to work on this and practice this before next week. So questions, comments, concerns on these sets of notes here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So go ahead, finish copying it in, and then turn it in, and sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thanks for watching my TED Talk.